Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our KUKAN talk. Um, today, we'll be talking about uh, how we've been working at CERN uh, for speeding up analysis pipelines using remote com container images. Uh, my name is Ricardo Rocha. Um, I work at CERN in, in the CERN cloud team. I'm a computing engineer. And I'm Spiro Strigazis. I work in the same cloud as well as a computing engineer focusing on containers. So today we'll be covering this topic. Uh, I will start by giving a very brief introduction to CERN and what we do here. So CERN is the European Organization for uh, Nuclear Research. Um, we focus on doing fundamental research and trying to answer uh, big questions uh, about the origins of the universe and the uh, uh, how matter um, uh, in, how matter is uh, constituted. So for, to answer all these questions, we basically build very large machines. The largest machine that we have today is the Large Hadron Collider, which is here in the map. It's a particle accelerator that is 27 kilometers in circumference where we inject proton beams, uh, one clockwise, the other one counterclockwise, and we accelerate them to very close to the speed of light and uh, to very high energies. Uh, we try then to make them collide uh, at very specific points where we built these uh, massive detectors uh, that allows, allow us to get a sneak peek into the collisions. Uh, to have an idea of the size, you have the Geneva airport uh, on the bottom right. Uh, CERN is actually uh, split or the accelerator is split between the, the Swiss and French border close to the European Alps. Uh, if we look a bit down into the what the actual accelerator looks like, it's 100 meters underground in the in a tunnel. Uh, we see here the magnets, and the, in the middle we have the beams uh, circulating. And to achieve these high energies, we actually have to cool them down to very close to absolute zero. Um, then we have these big uh, experiments that I mentioned. These are in large caverns, also underground. Uh, this is the compact muon solenoid, the uh, CMS. Uh, the cavern is 40 meters by 40 meters. It's uh, fully filled with detector. The detector weighs 14 tons, and you can see the size of the person for an idea of the scale. Uh, it acts like a gigantic camera, taking 40 million pictures a second. Um, and then the result of this uh, um, uh, collection is just a, a very large amount of data that we have to store and eventually analyze. Uh, this analysis has many steps, but the, the final step will be the end user analysis where we generate plots like the one we see here, uh, which showed the peak uh, that uh, gave us the Higgs discovery back in 2012, and that led to the Nobel Prize in 2013. Um, so here, to process all this data, we need a large amount of computing resources. We have our own uh, data center on premises so that gives us something like 300,000 cores, but we actually need more capacity. So over the last uh, 20 years or so, uh, we built this very large uh, uh, grid computing infrastructure where we connected more than 200 sites around the world. And uh, this acts like a giant supercomputer for our uh, physicists. At any moment, you will see something like 400,000 jobs running in, in this infrastructure. And uh, we have we more than double the capacity we have uh, on premises to close uh, very close to 1 million cores these days. Um, this is uh, one crucial part of uh, our system to analyze the data. And uh, this shows also how important it is to optimize the software distribution, which is why uh, we are doing this talk today and how to describe to you how we used to do it and how we are uh, now doing it uh, using containerized uh, infra infrastructures. So if we look um, a bit at what we used to do, uh, and we still do, actually, this is the main way of distributing software in the, in the grid. Uh, we use this uh, system called CERN VMFS. Uh, it's a very scalable uh, uh, system to distribute software in the grid and across all the sites. It acts like a hierarchical uh, uh, read-only file system uh, where CERN is the what we call the stratum zero or the top of the hierarchy where we push all the software. The experiments will do their releases and push software here. And then at each site, we run this uh, 
caches, which uh, are exposed to the users as uh, read-only POSIX file systems in user space. And we do very aggressive caching at these sites to optimize both the network uh, uh, usage uh, to, towards these sites, but also to speed up the, the start of the jobs, uh, making sure that only the data that is actually needed is, is pushed to the, to the different sites uh, on request. Uh, this has been a very successful system and we, we use it intensively. So when we start uh, looking at containers, uh, it's kind of very important to, to make sure that we achieve the same efficiency. So this was the big question when people started containerizing their workloads and thinking about using containers. We, we started thinking, how can we uh, rely on something similar uh, to, to do the same for containers? So there's a couple more questions that come uh, more detailed questions that come with this. Uh, so if we think at software packaging in container images, it's pretty important how to speed up container creation. If you think that uh, to start a container, you need to pull the image uh, and you consider that some of uh, our users have images that are uh, several gigabytes or even tens of gigabytes, uh, this can take uh, uh, quite a while, especially if you, if you have the large clusters where we might you might need to pull uh, these images in, in many different instances at the same time. This puts, uh, not only uh, slows down the job start, but also puts a lot of load in, in our system. Uh, so how can we reduce and optimize network usage? Um, we knew how to do this already with uh, something like caching with CDMFS. And then if you think of cluster autoscaling, which is something that we try to explore uh, as much as possible, uh, we have to think if, if we are handling huge images and we are constantly dropping and, and creating new nodes, then we'll uh, be on this cycle of having to pull new images constantly because the nodes are, are just fresh. So all of this is quite important and this is what triggered all, all the work that we're describing today. So there's some history on, um, on before what we will present here. Uh, so back in 2016 at FAST, a system called Slacker was presented that uh, allowed a fast distribution of uh, uh, Docker containers and introduced this idea of lazy loading of uh, Docker container images. Uh, the CVMFS team took this idea and implemented uh, Docker CVMFS graph Ira. Uh, this worked very well while we were using Docker, but when uh, the components started being split, then uh, we couldn't use the graph driver any longer and we had to look at uh, other runtimes that were appearing. So with this, I will pass to Spirus that will focus on describing how lazy, lazy pulling is working. Thank you, Ricardo. I think I managed to share my screen. Uh, so yeah, I will be talking now about uh, lazy pooling. Um, building on the, the history that Ricardo already mentioned, uh, there is uh, some ongoing work, work already. Uh, the CVMFS uh, developers um, already started implementing a, a container D remote snapshot based on CVMFS. And uh, this is uh, still wor work in progress. Uh, but in this presentation, uh, we will focus on another implementation that started by the container D uh, authors based on uh, StarGZ. And we will also do a demo with a, a distributed uh, hierarchy of container registries. So what is a remote snapshotter and what is uh, StarGZ? Um, uh, back in 2019, um, the a big, a big group of the container D authors uh, had uh, some brainstorm sessions uh, to implement uh, re remote snapshotting, and they came up with uh, with an API uh, based on um, a, a gRPC API for uh, pluggable uh, remote snapshotters. And uh, the first implementation came from NTT and uh, Kohi Tokunaga and uh, Hirosuda. That was based on SRGZ. SRGZ stands for Seekable TARGZ and um, it's uh, extending the properties uh, of uh, uh, tarballs that uh, make up uh, container images. So a, a very interesting um, uh, property that uh, tarballs have is that if you concatenate or append 
many tarballs uh, um, uh, one after the other, there's still a, val a valid tarball. So based on this idea, uh, uh, some developers at Google to improve um, the performance of the Golden, uh, Golang uh, build system uh, proposed the CRFS and uh, implemented a uh, proposed uh, SRDZ uh, protocol. Um, so what this uh, snapshot does, it indexes all the files in all the layers and it creates uh, uh, si si something similar to the manifest uh, for container image to where all these uh, files exist in, in every layer. And then it mounts, uh, it does a fuse mount for every, every layer from the container registry um, to the host, leveraging uh, remote um, uh, uh, leveraging uh, range queries, uh, uh, range HTTP queries to the registry. And as I mentioned, uh, this is a JRPC plugin uh, configured um, and uh, in, in every node in the container decommunicates to it uh, via socket. So this is more like a visual representation of it. Um, so on the left side, we have uh, the container registry, on the right side, a node that pulls images. So on the left, you can see that we have. Um, uh, the hierarchy that uh, under v2 in uh, the registry path we have uh, um, every layer uh, as a blob and uh, on the right side we can see that we have container d communicating with the snapshotter and the snapshotter creates a fuse mount um, uh, for every for every layer and then it creates an, an overlay file system where the root fs uh, of the images where the container starts um, to demonstrate uh, how this works, we, we ran some experiments uh, with a very big uh, image uh, produced by the Atlas experiment called Athena. And Ath Athena is um, um, uh, this, this image, Athena is a full release uh, that uh, is made up of 17.2 uh, gigabytes uncompressed and uh, 5.4 gigabytes uh, compressed. And um, uh, B below you can see uh, an optimized uh, image for star GZ that uh, uh, ter turns into a file uh, turns every file into another uh, tarball. So um, as you can see the size increases a bit uh, because we have the additional size of uh, the header of every tarball. So for the for this experiment uh, we run uh, a simple workload uh, to analyze uh, an event. Uh, an LHC event. So here in the first row, we have uh, the native execution with uh, just uh, the native container D over LFS uh, implementation. And uh, we can see the pooling time is uh, uh, an optimistic 3.3 uh, minutes, uh, th three and a half minutes uh, time, uh, while in strategy Z is a flat uh, 15 to 17 seconds. And then you can also see that uh, most more importantly for network ingress, um, in the case of the native uh, uh, implementation of container D, we pull almost six gigabytes of data, while in StartDZ we pull exactly the files that we need, and we have uh, less than one gigabyte. And a, a very big benefit of that is that um, um, of the implementation of the snapshot is that uh, while we lazy pull all the files that uh, on, on the time that we need. Uh, we don't lose uh, a lot of performance. So the, the, the execution time um, of the workload with uh, StartZ is just one minute uh, uh, slower than the native one. So if we add up the pulling time, uh, executing with uh, StartZ, uh, it's faster. Uh, so, so to summarize, we have like very fast startup time, low network traffic, uh, the memory consumption for the snapshot is a little concerning, but uh, it's something we can investigate. And the drawback is that um, to build this optimized image, you need a lot of time. In this case, it was uh, 45 minutes. And to demonstrate this, um, like more in practice, I will do uh, a quick demo. Uh, so here I have one container that runs the container D and the snapshot and then auxiliary CentOS 8 container. So we will see um, an example image uh, that I have. So this is a Docker file that uh, pull that bases on uh, Python 3.9 and adds a simple 
a hello pi file that just prints hello and uh, i will just uh, go and build it but i have it already built and then i can assume that i can push uh, to registry and what i will show you in in the other uh, screen is that i can just optimize it and uh, then try to, to lazy pull it so in in this case i have already optimized it but uh, so now i will just, just try to uh, pull the image but uh, not uh, the full image and just do the few months that I, that I described. Um, here you can see that it downloads uh, the manifest of the image and the index of all the files and in just uh, in a flat time of six seconds, sometimes it's five, uh, but it's much faster than uh, a normal image. And then they will also go ahead and uh, download the massive image that I described and you will see that the pulling time it's just a little more uh, than the standard, than a simple uh, Python image. Uh, while it's downloading, I will also show you that I have uh, Docker stats running to monitor uh, the traffic uh, of container D. So here you can see uh, that uh, the IO of uh, the, dem uh, the container D demo container was only 30 megabytes. And here you can see uh, but in 16 seconds, it uh, managed to download the image. Finally, I would like to show you that um, uh, this is the original image uh, built from Atlas and it has 14 layers. And this is the optimized image that they created, again, comprised by 14 layers. But now you can see that the, uh, the signatures uh, of the layers are different. Uh, back to Ricardo to talk to you about uh, the demo that I described about uh, the hierarchical registries. Okay. So thanks, Spiros. I'll just hide here my bar. So uh, Spiros explained um, all the points. Can you hear me? Uh, Spiros explained all the all the points of uh, why we are doing this lazy pulling uh, by showing a, an example with a, with a couple of images. Uh, well, uh, what we'll try to explain now is how we are deploying this uh, as uh, in our infrastructure. So, uh, coming back to coming back to uh, the initial slide that I showed, which was uh, how we are doing today the software distribution, we rely on CERN VMFS. So, this is a, a system that we are uh, very happy with. It works very well. So. Um, one option is to rely on uh, on the implementation of a remote snapshot or relying uh, on, on this uh, system. And this is something that is happening, as we mentioned earlier, and something that can work very well. Uh, what we will try also to demo today is uh, something that could be more generic, um, which is to rely on the um, a couple of registries, uh, distributed registries. So instead of just relying on the file system and the HTTP caches, really relying on the implementation of the container registries. Uh, the implementation is, uh, is up to, to, to you, uh, which one to choose. In, in the demo today, I will be using Harbor, which is also something we deploy here at CERN. Uh, and the, the way it works is very similar to what we saw for CVMFS, which is a hierarchical um, model, with CERN being at the top of the hierarchy, uh, where we push the images, and then at each site, uh, we can run uh, another registry that can be configured as a proxy cache so that uh, if people pull the image, it will first cache it and the second pull will be much faster or just configured with replication by using some pattern to decide which, which images and tags should be pushed uh, along to the sites. Uh, it's very important that it has proper SRGZ uh, support and ESRGZ as, as uh, Spurs showed uh, for performance. Uh, and also one benefit of using this is that any OCI artifact, if, uh, if you have an OCI uh, registry, it can be pushed. It's not only Docker images, it can use to, to push uh, home charts or uh, ML uh, artifacts containing model data or, or weights. Uh, so in the in the picture on the right, you see what we'll try to do in the demo, which is we have CERN uh, with a registry, and then we have two regions deployed, uh, in this case, in the Google Cloud. Uh, we have a cluster running on US uh, Central C and a cluster running in the Netherlands. So we have two clusters in different continents. Uh, and then 
each one has its own registry. So this is the Harvard registry running on US Central. This is the Harvard registry on, on the Netherlands. And each one has a cluster running with five nodes that will try to run some, some user analysis. Uh, and they will use their local registries that then can, can point to the top. So I will now jump to the demo. And uh, here is the deployment of my two Harbor uh, instances. The one on the left is the one we have in the Netherlands, uh, this one. And the one on the right is the one we have in uh, the US central region. So I'll, I'll just browse through. You can see here, uh, they are very, they are exactly uh, the same configuration. And this is the, the way we would deploy so that uh, all the sites feel kind of the same. And then you can have multiple projects. In this case, I have a CERN cache, which is a proxy cache and it's linked to the CERN registry. So whenever you pull from, from this prefix, you, it will just pull the image from the, from the CERN cache. And then you have Docker IO just for convenience uh, as another cache. And then we have this SDRGZ that is configured as a replicated uh, instance. So we have a configured that it should replicate everything that is in this, uh, in this uh, uh, prefix at CERN, including the Athena image. Uh, so the way this works for the proxy caches is that you define two registries and it controls the health. And then for the replicated one, we just de define replication rules. And you can see here that uh, we, we just, uh, we had here a successful replication. A previous one uh, was not successful. You can decide to trigger this manually or you can decide to, to make it scheduled like every hour or every couple of minutes. Uh, this, uh, this is the way we structure. So, uh, after this, uh, this overview, I will try to submit um, a workload. So the workload is, uh, is uh, very similar uh, to, to what uh, our, our uh, users do. Um, so just in this case, I will be using Argo Workflows, which is kind of a new tool that uh, most users are not using. But what this will do is it will submit uh, the same workload to two different clusters, to the two different clusters, but on the left one in the Netherlands, uh, I'm using uh, ESRGZ um, deployments. So you can see here uh, the, the workload already starting. And on the right, I'm doing the same in US Central, but using uh, a normal uh, non SRGZ image. And you can see that on the left, we already started the workflow. Well, on the right is still in the first step of preparing it because it has to download the, every step downloads the same image, the same uh, Athena image, and it takes quite a bit longer. So we can see that in the, in the Netherlands, we, our, wor our workflow is already going uh, pretty fast um, and uh, executing some steps. Each, each, what we do here is we parallelize the job into tw 20 uh, different parallel jobs and each job has three steps one for staging in, one for processing, and eventually we'll have uh, staging out when, when the processing stops. Uh, while we see this, uh, this uh, job uh, with SRGZ going really fast, and some of the jobs even already pushing data out, uh, the Netherlands, the one in US Central, which is using the normal images, uh, is just starting to launch its job. So it's way behind. And we can see here that uh, in just a couple of seconds or, or so, we'll be using, we'll, we'll be having this workflow completed. So this is, this is a kind of critical for us. You can see the benefit when you start parallelizing uh, the job. And especially, as I mentioned, when you have uh, like uh, enabled cluster auto scaling and some nodes might come and go, it's really, really important that you, you don't have to pull the, Im the full image every time. If your job is just using a small fraction of the image, which is the case here. Uh, the images are 18 gigabytes, but each job is, is just pulling a, a very small fraction. So we can see here that uh, our US Central, the non-SRGZ is, uh, is still behind, but moving. This one is almost finished. So if we do it, leave it a couple more seconds, we might even uh, be able to see it finishing. So I'll, I'll just give it a couple of seconds. Uh, one, one thing that uh, I will also want to show you is that in this case, for every node, it's pulling the image once. So it's putting a lot of stress on the, on the storage where the container images are, are being uh, put. So in, this, in our case, we have our Harbor instance uh, that is backed by a GCS uh, bucket. So we are actually putting load on the GCS bucket. So our, our uh, Optimize uh, SRGZ based workflow is already finished. This one is uh, 
almost like halfway, let's say. So it's, it's, it's a significant advantage if, if you start scaling out. So the last bit I would like to show you uh, is this, uh, this traffic that I mentioned. So again, on the left, you have the, the Netherlands uh, West 4 European region. So I'll just refresh here the data. But I'll try to show you, hopefully we'll see some data about um, uh, the traffic uh, being push, uh, put or the load being put on the GCS bucket. So there we go. So in this case, we see here the bucket is US central. Um, it's loading here. And we can see the network traffic sent because it's serving the data. And we see here the equivalent on the, on the Netherlands region. So you can see here that we picked that several tens of megabytes per second, something like 80 megabytes. While here, uh, this hardly has a peak because we basically downloaded very little data in this case uh, for this end user analysis. That was a very, very small fraction of the image being used. So that's it for the demo. And uh, I will pass back to Spiros for, for the rest of the talk. Okay, uh, thanks Ricardo. Um, so the, the status, uh, the current status of the snapshotter is that uh, although it's uh, in its first stages, is uh, very, much, very much functional and uh, we can achieve uh, super fast uh, container startup times. Uh, we can dramatically reduce the network usage as uh, Ricardo showed and also the cost usage in case that you use the public cloud. And um, as we saw uh, in the um, example that we did with Athena, the CPU overhead is very little and uh, overall uh, there is a big gain uh, um, CPU wise and also network wise. And um, uh, just limitation that we found in our own uh, GitLab registry that we uh, used before starting uh, uh, leveraging Harbor is that uh, there is a strong requirement for strategy Z to support HTTP range of queries and in, in our case, it's not supported. Uh, improvements that we would like to see, we would like to see for strategy Z is the speed up of uh, image optimization. And in case of Athena, I took uh, 45 minutes in other images, it might take uh, even longer. Additionally, what would be very important for us is to be able to create optimized images that are based on uh, already optimized images. Uh, so just uh, optimizing uh, in strategy Z, uh, um, the additional layers. And finally, what we would like to see also is that uh, being able to optimize images with some existing data. So instead of cramming data inside the image, maybe we could just mount them. And if we have uh, workloads, um, uh, that we expect to have and we have a sample workload, we can optimize the image with a sample workload and then um, uh, uh, have an image which is very much well prepared uh, uh, for, for the actual workloads. Some small issues that we found uh, is that um, container D doesn't gracefully fall back to the standard uh, snapshotting uh, if the remote snapshot is down, uh, whichever snapshot that is. And I would also like to do some further investigations in the hub, in our harbor configuration because we hit some limitations with large layers and uh, the snapshot was not behaving in the way we would like. Um, also would like uh, to thank um, uh, the team from NTT, Hiro and Kohi, uh, CVMFS team, of course the CERN cloud team and all the participants that made uh, this possible. Uh, Ricardo, do you want to say some closing no. remarks as well? No, uh, again, yeah, thanks uh, everyone also for watching and thanks uh, for everyone to, that has been working on this. This is uh, one of the key points that will help us uh, making the best use of containers also on the grid, not just at the local sites. So yeah, um, I would also highlight that uh, this is the work of uh, uh, a lot of people. Uh, we had a workshop in May last year that uh, kind of triggered a lot of this uh, here at CERN. 
uh, with people from from different companies around the world. So yeah, we we look forward to continue improving the system. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>